The outfit was beautifully designed, and later we sort of changed it a little because uh, standards and practices said that um, it was a little too revealing. I can't, I, it's so hard to believe that nowadays, but, but it was. Some people become well known because of their legs or other body parts that are kind of glamorous, but a belly button, for goodness sake. <laughs> Oh, God. My mother said, only you, Barbara, would have a, <laughs> a sexy belly button. <laughs> For over 2,000 years, I've been in that bottle. And then, then this hand released me. In the mid-60s, Barbara Eden became a household name, starring in the classic sitcom, I Dream of Jeannie. The show ran for 139 episodes over five seasons and made Barbara a TV icon for playing the title role, a beautiful genie freed from her bottle after 2,000 years by a handsome astronaut marooned in a deserted island. Oh. I must have gone further into orbit than I thought. I like her. She's easy to live with. She really is. I, I like her a lot. And I, I think what makes me so happy is that so many people around the world like her. Not me. They like that character. And they like the show for what it is. And it, it takes people out of themselves and into another world. And I appreciate that. I like it very much. Barbara's first big break came in 1955 as a recurring sketch performer on The Johnny Carson Show. Baba. Bobo. Baba, I want you to meet my best friend, Boo. Boo Boo <laughs> my fiance, Baba. Over the next 10 years, she appeared in nearly 20 films and two dozen TV shows, including two seasons of How to Marry a Millionaire. Like your friend Logo, that Eddie, always talking about his yacht. Did you ever see it? Sure. One night he let me row it across the lake in Central Park. Then in 1965, Barbara landed the lead in I Dream of Jeannie after sitting down for tea with show creator Sidney Sheldon. I had been reading in Variety, you know, in The Hollywood Reporter, about Sidney and about him testing all these gorgeous brunettes and tall, all tall, and, um, and they were all Mediterranean. You know, uh, Italy, Greece, Israel, uh, all but beautiful. And they were all beauty contest winners. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's not for me. You know, it's a different different kind of part. And then uh, my agent sent me the, the script, and I read it. And I, I recognized immediately what it was. And Wilt called me and said, uh, did you like the, the, the part? And I said, Yes, I think it's great. And he said, well, they want you for it. And uh, they want you to have tea with Sidney Sheldon. And uh, that's, a, that's the only caveat that we have. I, I said, do they know what I look like? I mean, they, they weren't looking for, for me in this part. He said, well, they must have found you because you're, <laughs> you know, they want to do it. So I went down and I had tea at the Beverly Hills Hotel with Sydney, and uh, I got the part. That was it. But soon after winning the role, Barbara thought she lost it, because after seven years of marriage to her first husband, actor Michael and Sarah, the happy couple learned they were expecting their first child. Now all of a sudden, the same day that Jeannie sold, the doctor told me I was pregnant. So I immediately called uh, Sydney. Uh, because I knew they had to replace me. And I, um, I called and said, I want to talk to you, please. And, and he said, well, we're, I, I, I can't do it now. We're going out to dinner. He said, can you? I said, I really have to talk to you. So he told me, he, I, he wasn't too far away. He was having dinner at someone's home. So I drove over there, and he went into the man's little office, you know, at the side. And he looked at me, and he said, you're pregnant. And I said, yes, <laughs> and I can't do your show, and I'm so sorry, but I wanted to let you know, and he, his face dropped, because <laughs> he was joking, you know. 
And he said, oh no, no, I said, I'm so sorry, but I, we've tried so long and I'm so happy, <laughs> you know? So he said, well, you go go home and I'll, we'll talk about this, we'll, we'll find out. Well, God love him, he, he got to work, got it together. We did the first 13 shows with me pregnant. Hmm. <laughs> I was a walking tent. I think I had so many gauzy things hanging down. But uh, it was one of the happiest times of my life. Barbara gave birth to her son, Matthew, in August 1965, only three weeks before the I Dream of Jeannie premiere. I don't know if it changed me. I'm not that, I, I don't, I'm not that introspective. I just know that it was the most wonderful thing that ever happened to me. It's a miracle having a baby. You know, you, you, and, and having this little creation, it was, um, I mean, I get goosebumps when I think about it. It's, it's uh, the loveliest, lovely, for me at least, thing that could happen in my life. But nearly 20 years later, Barbara received heartbreaking news when she learned her only child had developed a serious drug problem, something he'd been secretly struggling with for most of his teenage years. We didn't recognize the behavior, the sleeping and the, you know, anger that would come up all of a sudden of this charming, darling boy. I was scared to death. I mean, I, I didn't know what to do. Um, you can't do it. He has to do it. He was too young to think he needed it, needed to rehab or help. So that was, that was the worst time, actually. Um, he was such a beautiful in and out human being. He was very loving, uh, very caring about other people. He would have had a chance if we'd recognized it when he was 13, 14, you know, the kids on the block kind of thing. Um, but we, we recognized it too late till it was really, really obvious. Tragically, in 2001, Matthew died of an accidental heroin overdose. He was 35 years old. I don't think there's anything worse than to lose your child. Especially, even if he's 35 years old, he's still your baby. And then I began to speak to parents, to parent groups. Because I had a lot of help when Matthew was really in trouble through the years. Uh, there were core people in this town who really helped me. Um, and I felt that people should know, they really should know that it's not a bad thing to be strict with your child uh, about privacy, mainly privacy. If you know what's going on, you have a chance to fix it. If you fix this addiction problem before they're if you get it at 13 or 14, you can put them in rehab. They don't have a say, and they have hope. And I know people who have been very successful at that. Um, but if you don't know about it till they're 18, you're dead in the water. You know, you, you try, it's all up to them, and you just have to hold your breath. It's, it's a wonder that he lived to be 35. When it comes to marriage, the third time has definitely been the charm for Barbara. She and husband John Eicholt have been happily married for three decades, an anniversary they celebrated earlier this year. I think we, we have common morals, common, um, he's from Kansas, <laughs> KU, Raha, Rock Shock. His, he's not in the business, which I, I, I hesitate saying that because that makes no difference. It just, just happens that he isn't. But he enjoys what I do, which is comforting to me. He has a good sense of humor. Uh, we love traveling. There's a lot about him, the whole package. I just love him. While Barbara's resume now includes more than 100 TV, film, and theater roles, she's also a best-selling author, thanks to her 2011 memoir, Genie Out of the Bottle. And this August, she published her first children's book, Barbara and the Jen, which she co-wrote with writer Dustin Warburton. I thought, you know, children, especially today, 
They're, they're so reliant on their devices, which is okay, that's all right, they're good. But that, that, they should be stimulated. It, 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 not just uh, your passion for someone else on a screen, it should be also your own passion, looking at that printed word and going to that place and understanding other people. And you understand it more if you can take it in. And you can take it in if you read it. So uh, that's why we wrote the book. Barbara also celebrated her 90th birthday this year. And in case you can't tell, she's showing no signs of slowing down. <laughs> no, I hope I, I think sometimes one is forced to slow down. <laughs> but uh, I, no, no, I'll do what I do till I can't. I'm very content. Yes, indeed. I, I think I'm really lucky. What was it the uh, baseball player said? I'm the luckiest person on earth, or, you know, Lou Gehrig. I, uh, I, I do. I think I've been so lucky, and I'm very happy and content. I have dear friends. So lucky to have them. I have a wonderful family, a very supportive husband, a dog who's adorable but a brat. You know, <laughs> um, yes, I'm, I'm content.